Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How you doing out there? Hope you're having a good day. We're going to talk about the withdrawal strategy here today using uh, the bucket strategy. A lot of you have heard of this before. Uh, you have your different buckets for different periods in your retirement. Or uh, if you have a long-term goal, maybe you have different buckets for as you need money for that goal. It could be property purchases, business uh, ventures, things like that. Well, today we're going to see if you have a bucket strategy, how can you determine which bucket is that pile of money. In other words, is it some Roth? Is it some traditional IRA? Is it your 401k and then maybe some cash? What do we do? So we're going to go through that bucket strategy because this is so important. It tells you how aggressive you can be with each bucket, right? If you know what dollars are there, you can go in there and say, okay, this account can't be very aggressive. Part of this account can be aggressive, but the rest of it needs to be conservative because I'm going to start pulling from it. It's something that almost no advisor seems to do for customers, but we're going to make it simple and we're going to go over an example here today. I'm going to use my example, Mr. Pat Matheny. Uh, this is uh, nest egg software that we use for customers here. I'll just briefly go through a little bit about Pat Matheny. He is currently 59, looking to retire next year. So he's asking these questions. What should I do with my buckets? Uh, we've got $1,200 in current expenses. He's a single dude. Uh, he puts $6,000 in his Roth, $8,000 in the SEP, and then $4,000 in the taxable. He makes $88,000 a year, at least for the next year. He'd like to retire next year. Retirement expenses, just a little bit more. $2,200 there. He's got to pay for some health care along the way. And uh, he wants to spend a little bit more in the front part of his retirement. So he's going to spend an additional $24,000 a year from ages 60 to 70. And then he says, well, I'll probably slow down. You know, I just spend my $2,200 a month, maybe even less than that. If we look at his net worth here, he's got some bank accounts there. He's got a little bit of credit card debt. He's got investments there of his 401k, his taxable account, and his Roth, as we just saw there. He's got a property uh, loan for his uh, mortgage here. And then he owns the house. This is the asset itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by going over to his retirement tab. We're going to dive in here now. He's only got a 50% chance of making this happen, so we've got some work to do already. But what I want to do is look at his cash flow here. So in his cash flows of his current plan, we're looking at the dollars of every single year, right? So this is everything coming up. Next year, he'll have the income, and it's going to drop off when he officially retires, and then yada, yada, right? So different incomes start coming in. What we're going to do is look at his accounts and the withdrawal from each account in this plan that we have out. And what you can see is his taxable account is going to go first. He's going to be taking some money out of there. Then when, after a while, when he gets to start taking out of his 401k, he's going to start taking it out of there. And then he's going to use his taxable and his 401k a little bit to wrap things up towards the end. Think about what we've already learned from that already. His first bucket is apparently his taxable account. So we can't be aggressive with this sum of money. He's going to need that within the next four to five years. Chances are he's going to need a little bit more. So what I want to do now is I want to go see... Is there a more effective way for him to withdraw from the various buckets? In other words, what's the most efficient way to set up his buckets? So right now, he's got a strategy where he's withdrawing from uh, proportionally from whatever account he has to to meet his expenses. So he'll go from his taxable account. If there's not enough there, he'll go to tax deferred accounts, pre-tax 401ks, things like that. And he'll just keep going down the list until he finds it. Well, what this shows us is if there would be any incentive to him doing this differently. In other words, if we go from his taxable account then to his tax deferred accounts. In other words, we would deplete the taxable account first in the front run there, then tax deferred, and lastly, tax free accounts, his Roth IRA. So what we can see here is it changes his uh, taxable income a little bit, but it results in 54,000 more. Remember just a minute ago, we were over here saying, oh man, you only got a 50% chance of success. Well, what happens if we say, let's go ahead and do that distribution method. It's not gonna help a whole lot there. Uh, it doesn't really help a whole lot in terms of the extra money, but it gives him a chance to know what his buckets are. Now, we can change the investments inside of this. Right now, his investments are pretty evenly split, 70, let's call it 70, 30. We can go through there and pick on some of these and say, well, look, unless you want to save more money, you're going to have to take more risk with some of those longer term investments. Well, let's say Pat says, well, I don't know. What, what accounts should I take more risk in? All right, let's go take a look. So now that we've modeled this idea of him withdrawing from his accounts with a proposal, so I'll change it to his proposed plan, let that calculate some numbers and run some things here. And so now here's what we've got. We've got withdrawals, uh, 18,000 from taxable and so on and so on. Then we go over to the 401k, start taking out from that. It's not a big change actually. It's a, a very minor change from uh, some of the dollars if you notice when we were just looking at it. 
So now we've got these buckets essentially. We know that the taxable account, not all of it, but what money is basically in there right now, uh, let's call it 160, 70, 80, 90, um, 210,000 or so. Uh, if I go back over to his profile, net worth, uh, investments, Here's his taxable account. He didn't have 210,000 in there, so we're assuming some growth. Now in here, this 158, we've got to take a look at this, right? He's in our aggressive stock fund, our dividend, oh no, wait, there we go. He's in our aggressive stock fund, our dividend fund here, he's got some cash. We've got to take a look at maybe doing things a little bit different in this account. We cannot take that much risk. We should be looking more of an income type focus, uh, you know, something a little more consistent, less drawdowns. We want to measure that. I did a video on that in the past. And we want to see if we can somehow smooth that out. Now, when we move over to the 401k, that's five years from now, starting today, right? So five years from now before we have any need to take that money out we could take a little bit more risk in there. So that bucket is not necessarily one entire account because we're gonna bounce back and forth if you saw on that screen there. But now we look at this and we say, okay, you got some real estate in there, you got some small cap and a lot in the large cap, that's awesome. We could probably fine tune that even more so that when we come and look at that five years from now, let's say this is his uh, account right now, when we look five years from now, we could take, uh, we could say that that account maybe has grown a little bit more. So that bucket can afford to take more risk. Now, if we go back over to the last bucket, I don't think it gets to his Roth here. Uh, accounts, withdrawal from, let's go to uh, ending balance by account. Never gets to his Roth, right? Never gets there. So we've got a, um, that'll help him, by the way. He's at 50% right now. If we go in there and say, okay, pull from the Roth later in life, then he definitely won't run out of money. Right now, he uh, ends his life with a positive balance. That's why it's showing that. It says you'll end your life with a whole $6,597. That's why it's cutting it kind of close and it says, hey, there's a 50% chance this doesn't work out to age 90. So we've got to go in there and say, okay, bump up that Roth. We're gonna have to draw from that a little bit because we're not currently drawing from that. But that bucket, the last bucket, that can afford to take more risk because technically we're not touching it at all, but we're going to go and uh, touch it later in life. So the Roth account now can swing for the fences. Number one, it's tax-free growth, right? It can be as aggressive as humanly possible because you want that growth in there. There's no capital gains income, uh, dividend income tax or anything like that. So now we have a plan that's starting to take shape. We know the most efficient way for him to take money out of his account that leaves him with a little bit more, improves his odds a little bit. Now we take taxable 401k Roth IRA and we say, okay, careful here, a little bit more risk here, swing for the friggin' fences over here and that'll help your plan. Imagine that, right? If you just think this through account by account, we all have numerous accounts, it's normal. But we start thinking this through as how every dollar can get to work. We've gotta make every dollar work, especially if you're like old Pat there, cutting it kind of close in retirement. Well, uh, that's all I have for you there. I hope that helps a little bit just to get you thinking, just to kind of think about your dollars. If you're working with a financial advisor, make him do this for you. Take some time aside, find quiet time and say, hey man, work through this. Or hey lady, uh, we need to spend some time. If they won't help you, you know where to find us, oldjazzwealth.com. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for the support, by the way. And uh, if you hit the subscribe button, that helps support us more. Enjoy.